Welcome to worship this morning. Uh, I'm going to just invite you to please stand and join us for a brief order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who came to wake us from sleep, who leads us into the light of grace. Let us prepare the way of the Lord by confessing our sin against God and our neighbor. God of all time, we confess that we have not prepared for your merciful reign among us. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says our God. In Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven, and all things are made new. Rejoice in the good news. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You. Take this time to share the peace with one another. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Peace of 
Lord be with you. And also with you. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins, and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
First lesson is from Isaiah chapter 64. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tumble, tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean and all our righteous deeds are like filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf and our inquiries, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. The second lesson is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end 
so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. The Gospel according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. Jesus said, In those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson as soon as its branches become tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, be alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to be on watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated, and the kids can come forward while we'll the lighting of the Advent candles. Hello. So this Sunday is the first. Sunday in Advent. There's four Sundays that we light these candles back here. And each week we talk about preparing our hearts for Christmas. And today we're going to light the first candle. And from our Bible story today, it tells us to prepare for God. So we're um, preparing for Jesus to be born. And one of the ways we do that is by celebrating hope. And Here's the thing about hope. Um, that's kind of like, I always thought of it was something like um, naming what I want. I hope it snows. I hope we have a fun day. Um, and it can be kind of, sound like a kind of a whiny feeling, you know, kind of, or maybe it's a scary thing. Oh, I hope this works, you know. But the word hope also means more of a bubbly, fizzy feeling, uh, kind of a crazy excitement because what it's about is like knowing that you're going to get something for sure. That's the kind of hope we're talking about during Advent. It's, um, we already expect it. We already know that something really great is happening. So it's, it's that kind of hope that we're talking about. It's that butterflies in your stomach feeling that you're so excited. It feels, your stomach feels all like, whoa, it's crazy. Um, there's a poet who wrote, hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul. So hope is having one advent candle and we're, we're waiting for the others to be lit and be closer to Christmas, another week closer to Christmas. Um, hope is like the fireworks going off. Um, 
It's exciting, and that's what we're, this candle is representing, is that kind of hope. It's, it's not just, oh, I hope. It's, I hope. I'm full of hope. Oh, my gosh. And it's really exciting. So that's what we're lighting this candle about today, the candle of hope. And so I ask you to please pray with me. Do a repeat after me. Prayer. Dear God, we light this candle on the first Sunday in Advent. We to remind ourselves that we must prepare with a bursting hope for the coming of the Christ child. Amen. So while my acolyte lights one of the blue candles here, we're going to sing a song, and you guys can move to your seats. It's He Came Down. Just one of the blue ones. So today's candle is about hope, and our reading is about keeping awake, being aware, seeing God in the unexpected. Some years ago, the Washington Post decided that they were going to do an experiment, so they hid these cameras in the D.C. metro station during rush hour, the morning rush hour. And for 43 minutes, the nation's greatest violinist, Josh Bell, performed six classical pieces, and about 1,097 people passed by. Joshua Bell had just played a concert the previous night in which the cheapest seats sold for $100. However, during his performance in the subway station, only seven people stopped to listen, and only for a brief minute, possibly, if that. Twenty-seven gave money while they were on the run, which totaled to $32 and change. And that leaves 1,070 people who hurriedly rushed by and completely missed and was oblivious to the event that was occurring. On YouTube, there's a video of this experiment, and it's uh, filmed in a fast-forward, uh, yep, right there. And it's, it's filmed so that uh, they, they sped up the film. And there's an eeriness to it, because as you see, the people are rushing by very quickly. But Joshua Bell's movements, while they rush by, is very fluid. The Washington Post noted this, and they said, when you watch it, you, you think he is a ghost, and then you see it. He is the one who is real, and they are the ghosts. They concluded this experiment by stating, people don't recognize beauty if they haven't been trained to see it. Do we recognize God in the places where we haven't been trained to see God or the experiences or the people? Where is God where we don't expect God to be? And when have we been more like ghosts and less real in a God moment? One of the things that we do as human beings to survive in life is mark compartmentalize our lives. We create these compartments, sacred, secular. 
It's a way of understanding our living. But honestly, that's never really worked, and it's never really been theological. <laughs> and it's, right now, we live in a time of social networking and our work and our family and our school and our social lives, they're all commingling. And so this theory of compartmentalizing our lives, keeping our work friends separate from our family, from our, it's kind of dissolving. The black and whiteness that we like to order our lives with is turning gray. There's less differences between the urban and rural living. There's less separation between that which we call secular and sacred. And if you really, truly study the Bible, that never existed in the first place. God has always commingled and been among us in our, all of our lives, our whole lives. God is a whole divinity and not just a church thing. So where is God that you don't expect God to be? Do you even look for God in unexpected places? The gospel text this morning says that we are to be aware and be alert. Martin Luther wrote in his Theology of the Cross that God's greatest moment and most honest revelation was in the cross, the most unlikely place to find God. Yet in that moment, we saw the true nature of God, God with us, even into death and suffering. The cross is the ultimate at one of God, or atonement at one -ment. God in the last place. You would expect divinity in the darkest hours, in the deepest suffering, in death. God there tearing down the division between the holy of holies and the rest of life. Beware. Be alert. This is the first Sunday of Advent. And oddly, in the first Sunday of Advent, there tends to always be a reading that is what we call apocalyptic, the end of the world type of text, which is not the way you would expect to kick off the Christmas season. But at the heart of apocalyptic literature, these stories and illustrations of the world's end and Christ's return is encouragement and end hope. That out of suffering and death, our God is in humanity. Out of suffering and death is the promise of new life. So when you think about finding God in the un most unlikely scene, I have another question. Who is it that actually would spot God in a scene like that? When Jesus' story, that person, the one who sees, who is aware, who is alert, is a criminal. So even, not only does God appear present in the least and unexpected places, those who are aware and alert may be the least expected people. See, one criminal criticized Jesus, ridiculed him. So did the soldiers. So did the people who came to watch the drama of his crucifixion. But another criminal, a thief, by nature, tries to steal salvation. The thief confesses that he has done nothing to earn favor, that he is being justly punished, and yet he asks Jesus to remember him. 
And here's the clue about recognizing God in those places where you don't expect God to be. Jesus says he will be with him in paradise. Jesus shows the thief grace. He doesn't even have to steal the grace. Jesus gives it to him freely. The clue I mentioned is that the hallmark of grace is in the unexpected places. When you spot the hallmark of grace in a place you wouldn't expect grace to be, you've just been in a God moment. When we witness unexpected grace and mercy, you just saw God in the least expected place. God chose not to avoid suffering or pain or the places of pain. God lives with us in those places that we don't want to go. So it is Advent, a time when we turn not so much to looking at the cross, but to the manger. And the truth of the matter is, the cross means nothing without the manger, and the manger means nothing without the cross. Both are unexpected places and circumstances in which you would find God present, God with us, Emmanuel. They are places that are like when we have those times, those circumstances, maybe in the future, maybe in the present, circumstances that we don't want to, we don't want to go there. Circumstances filled with unknowns that may seem like there are frightening possibilities. And like I said, we just don't want to go there. Those are the times to be aware, be alert. And then take from this story of God being present and, and being in those places that we don't expect God to be, where we've not been trained to see God or recognize God, that promise that God is really there, that we can take courage and step forward into those places, into those circumstances, and be confident when we do it. Confident that mercy and forgiveness and reconciliation and love and joy and gratitude and justice and hope and beauty and creative, expansive energy are all going to be in those places because those are the things of God and God is with us and God is there in the places we don't want to go because guess what? God live, is already living there. So amid all the planning and preparing that you do during the next few weeks, amid all the parties and the shopping, the cards and the cooking, all the craziness that we love and, and the dread that we experience sometimes with our holidays, make some space to be still. Or at least slow down a little. Because when you take that moment to be aware, to be alert, to be quiet, to take notice, you will feel more real than a ghost motioning through life. And when you do that, you may notice that there is beauty where you once walked by it, where you've not been trained to see it. And you may recognize hope where you only saw trouble. You may create an entirely new life out of the rubble of who you once were. That's God's stuff. That's spotting God in the unexpected. Emmanuel, God with us, blurs the lines of our neat compartmentalizing. It is like a world-class musician panning for dollars in a subway station. God may surprise you where you least expect. So beware. Be alert. God is with us. Amen.
Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into the heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by the light of Christ, let us pray for the coming dawn of joy, healing, and comfort for all God's people. Give light to your people, Lord. As the darkness grows and we await the return of daylight, give new life to your church. Shape our communities to be faithful vessels of the gospel for the sake of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Restore your creation, Lord. You give the earth opportunities for both sleeping and awakening. Thank you for the gift of restful seasons so that new life may grow according to your appointed time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bring peace to the nations, Lord. Keep us alert to injustice and oppression. Give us courage to cry out for what is right and guide world leaders toward fairness and peace for all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Stir up compassion in, in us for all who wait for you. Be near to those whose lives are shaken, those who are experiencing loss, those who long for healing and wholeness, those who live with HIV and AIDS, and those who are in any kind of need, especially West Bowman, Laura Cole, Charles Dunn, Marilyn Gabrielson, Valerie McKenzie, Melvin Nelson. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for child care workers, teachers, Sunday school leaders, and all who nurture and educate children. We give you thanks for their diligence and devotion. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. From ages past, your faithfulness has never failed. Shine your face upon us and bring us into the company of all your saints in light. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We raise our prayers to you, O God. And we pray especially for the family of John Van Bibber as they grieve his death. Lord, we raise these prayers in the name of the one who is, who was, and who is to come, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. This time we'll have a sharing of the gifts.
The Lord be with you. We should in all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you all also make all things new. In the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness, and so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This is the cup, this is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember you, God, your word dwelling among us. Full of grace and truth, we remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people and fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of incar God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom You may be seated. The meal is prepared and all are welcome to receive this meal of forgiveness. You'll be invited to come forward by the ushers. You may stand or kneel along the railing and you will receive the wine, the bread, and then either the dark liquid, which is wine, or the light liquid, which is grape juice, and there are gluten-free elements available. Just ask your server. Come, let us eat.
stand as you are able and receive the communion blessing, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Amen. God, for whom we wait, you come to us in the broken bread and the cup we share. Make us ready always to welcome Christ into our hearts and send us forth to be your people in the world, announcing your coming among us in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Turn your attention to the messenger, and uh, you can see most of the announcements in there. We are um, receiving thank offerings, and uh, I guess I'll let you guys do announcements that you have in case I repeat. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, uh, Laura asked me in her absence to remind everyone that next week at the second service we are having our Christmas program. And also following that service we are having a Christmas, a congregational Christmas dinner. There is a sign-up sheet out there. Uh, again, we will have meat provided and just bring a dish to share, but there is a sign-up sheet. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. I just want to thank all of you who came yesterday morning and helped us decorate the church. I think it looks fabulous. I've received a lot of compliments, and it couldn't have been done without all of your help and your creativity. So thank you very much. I wasn't here. Ha <laughs> ha. I just want to remind you yet again about the Springfield Mid-America Singers. This Tuesday night, okay, 7.30, it's going to be a full place. And we're going to have two groups of young students, small kids, from the Drury Children's Groups. So it's going to be a fun time. Just another reminder, for this coming Sunday, between services, I didn't get it into the messenger, so... Hopefully it'll get through our midweek reminder. We're going to have a follow-up meeting for our mission. We're trying to start the mission for Messiah. That's, we're looking at mission work both inside the U.S. as well as outside the U.S. We're starting to look at that as a new program that we hope many, many will be involved with. We had a great turnout the first time for sure, and we hope that many more will come to join, learn more about it, as well as participate. So, between, sun, between Sunday worship services in the bell choir room next Sunday. Thanks. You'll notice that there are poinsettia orders, so you can start getting those in. The other thing is we're taking nominations for the call committee, and there's a little white box just outside the door. You can stick your nomination names in there. Also, we um, updated the church's constitution, so if you have questions about that, um, we're meeting following worship today, uh, this service and the 11 o'clock service. A council member will meet, can meet with you in the fellowship hall. They'll be meeting with you, and I believe that's where it is. Yes. Okay, and um, yeah. Any other announcement, I think you can look it up and take this home and put it on your calendar. I invite you to please stand and receive the benediction. Each week, the benediction of Advent will be along the theme of the Advent candle, so tonight is the hopeful benediction. Be people of hope. Let hope live in your heart and share the hope of Christ with all you meet. Share hope by noticing someone else's humanity. Share hope by listening to someone's story. 
share hope by praying for our world. In this Advent season, we need to see, feel, and share hope. So as you go out into the wonder of God's creation, share hope with all whom you meet. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources for growing ministry, and follow our Savior and care for all in need. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia.
Left side, right 